Um, I went back to the Italian. So I'm Donna Tahona. I'm the business development manager of JLP Corporate. Uh, so just a little bit of a background about our company. Some of you might have known or might have heard about us already. Uh, we've always been attending uh, conferences, conventions like this. Uh, we have an exhibit here actually. So our company, Nobel Systems, uh, we are headquarter our headquarter is based in uh, US, California, USA. But we have an office here in the Philippines based in Ortigas Center Pasig City. So most of our partners uh, in the US, 90% of our partners uh, in the US are water utility districts. Here in the Philippines, same as well, same ratio. So uh, most of our partners also here in the Philippines uh, are water districts. So basically, you, what we are implementing here, a uh, GIS-based IT solutions company providing uh, basically whatever the requirement of our partners are. So today, uh, I am focusing on discussing one of our latest technologies, uh, which is the real-time GIS-based asset management system. We have different tools and modules that are in, uh, being done for everybody, but this time, uh, one of the modules, I will be I'm representing the asset management system. So we call our software Geo Viewer. Our asset management system consists of different subsystems. So one of the things that I'll be showing this morning is the asset management being used by the our other district. So all, just to say, not just asset management, we have different projects and tools that can be integrated to our asset management. So we have billing and collection system, we have hydraulics as well, we have hydraulic processing, we have sensors that could also be integrated to our system. So basically it's just uh, one common user interface for everybody. So our asset management system consists of again subsystems integrated to one another. So we have the work order system, we have the warehouse inventory system, and we have the public or citizens application. So all of these are different systems integrated to one another, which we can, above everything else, can also integrate to the building collection, to hydraulic modeling, to whatever GIS uh, IT solutions that we can use in our district offices. Next slide, please. Next. So this will be the user interface that will be used by the district. It's basically the map of the assets and all appurtenances, water assets and appurtenances of the district, laid out in front of the different layers. It uh, categorized to water system to land base, land base, uh, land base map. Uh, in, in case you would like to have a satellite image chain as the uh, map, you can also tell us to probably, or you can provide us a satellite so that it can be later. But we are partnered with Google, so we have the Google Earth map and the uh, street maps as well. Since we are partnered with Google, we also have street views for each of the areas, of course, when it's available. If you have, or if you would like to have a Google street view of villages or subdivisions, some of the water districts ask us if we can also include them because Google Street View, of course, cannot access these private villages. But if you have uh, like a permit into uh, getting the CCTV cameras of the villages or the subdivisions, we, we can also integrate CCTVs in our GIS so that we can always access it anytime and anywhere. So this is, uh, this is how it looks like. The main menu will be located on the upper right side of the user interface. Basically, all the tools and modules that you would like us to do are all located there. Next. So the GISPI, for example, we call the Geographic Information System Business Intelligence. Next. If you open these, of course, you could see the GIS data overview. Basically, this is the underlying component of all the modules and tools that we are doing. Next. As you can see here, we can see the meter 
the meters, the parcels, the parcels represents the houses. If you also want the CLUB, some of the water, uh, some of the LGUs that we've been serving wants to have um, tax mapping overlaid as well in their in their houses uh, layers. So here it's very uh, user friendly. Um, in the back end, we are using different tools like the SQL, Python. We are also using RGIS, QGIS. So basically, all of the hybrid computing technical technical softwares. But in the front end, in the UI that we made, we made it very high level in such a way that non, even the non-technical people can understand. One main reason is because we made our software for all the users, all type of users, you know, what are you doing in this ticket? What do I mean by that? From the field personnel, from the plumbers, from the meter readers, from the disconnectors, to the section uh, section managers, to the division managers, to the department levels, managerial level, levels, even the board of directors, if they want to have access real time to their data anytime, anywhere, using only via cell phone, Android, and iOS, we can do that user uh, user access for them. Of course, in a certain authority, uh, authorized level. Only, let's say, for example, for the uh, managerial level, you only want to see the summarized reports of each of the of your divisions. We can do that. For the meter readers, they can only have the access to the meter reading. For the cashiers and sellers, they can only, of course, do the connection for the district. Next. Next. Yes, this is the next. Next. Part of the GIS as well, we can, this is very important based on our experience. Some of you, even though you have these attributes already available in the district, you want it to be organized in a way that you can do, you can easily put up, uh, get a report out of it. So we can have all the filtering of the attributes that you want. So we can filter it out based on the uh, structures and pipes, you can filter it out based on the materials. As you can see here, we can see the structures. The structures represent all the points or the meters, valves, fittings, uh, pump stations, reservoir, and the pipes, this represents all the lines, like the service lines, the main lines. As you can see here, we can further filter all of the GIS data according to whatever attributes you have. Let's say materials, we can filter out the type of materials of each of the assets. If you have the age, some of the people or, or some of the people want us to do a report of uh, the ages, uh, age of their water assets, the sources, if, especially if you already have the, your DNAs, you can put it out as well. Next. Further, further filters can also be done. Let's say the diameter, these are just representation for the reports that can easily be accessed and print out using a template again that you will provide to us. Next. Now I have here the video of how the work order system is being used. So our work order system which is integrated of course in, in our asset management, it, we are encouraging the reporting of issues in two ways, internally via the employees of the water district and the other one is externally via the public application. Internally, of course, these are the work orders coming from the employees of the water district. And there are two types, how they, how will they report that? First is, if they don't know the location or the exact asset that has an issue. Let's say, if they don't know what particular pipe caused the flooding, for example, they'll just locate it in a specific in a general area and then create this particular work order request. So let's say they have this in their cell phone, in their, app, uh, in their mobile application, and they can locate it here. Now the other one is if they know the exact pipe that has an issue. So if they know the exact pipe that is causing the issue, they can click that particular asset or pipe and they can create a work order to add it integrated to that particular GIS asset already. You know, the difference between the two is that the second one, we already know where where 
uh, if our energy is part, the problem is. So it means we can further, since the GIS is a whole tender for the whole water district, we would know, we would assess, we can know all the uh, concession areas that might be affected by that particular leakage. So you can see here, this is a template that can be changed according again to your particular needs and requirements in reporting an issue. Next. Now the second one in reporting a work order request is via the public application or the citizens app. So here, this is how it looks like. This can be downloaded by anyone, of course, in your uh, in your area. So this is how it looks like. So if you will open the app, can you play? No, can you play?
So the ticket can be assigned to different departments, engineering, technical, commercial, the warehousing, the accounting, and these are the descriptions. Next. Now, the warehouse inventory system comes in when the work request has been transferred to the warehouse inventory system or in the property. So again, the process workflows depends, let me just reiterate that the process workflows depends on based on experience, it depends on the category of each of the water districts. If it's a smaller water district, of course, the process workflow niya must be this. It's less complicated than the bigger water districts, of course. So again, it depends on you. We will always do the process workflow according to your needs and requirements. So once it's assigned to the warehousing system, that's the only time that you will see these particular forms, these particular intelligent forms. We call this intelligent forms. So equipments, the labors, and the materials, and we also have here the inventory of your warehouse or your property. So the back end of these depends on in and out of the materials, equipment that you have, of course. You're, you'll be giving us the database, the current database that you have, and we will all input it here in a certain manner where the formula already fixed in the back end, let's say for the costing, whatever it is uh, put in our costing. So we can digitize forms like the property accountability receipt. We can digitize forms like the inventory custodian slip. So that it would automatically be incorporated and integrated there. So as you can see here, the materials already there depends on the units that you put and then the costing. After that, of course, you just have to update the ticket. So here are the list of requested work orders. As you can see, there are tabs also here. Really, if it's already released for work, and then completed, closed, and then all the requested issues or all the work orders that has been received by the water district. Of course, it can easily be searched. And then the heat map is also there as well. Next. Next. Now, for all the where, uh, in terms of our warehouse inventory system, this is the third uh, part of the asset management. You can see all the settings of the we call it work order settings. Again, the terminology depends on you. If you want to put warehouse settings or warehouse inventory system there, that's fine. Next, I, I just want to show you this current warehouse inventory. Of course, we have here the current inventory. We have here the loss low stock. I don't know if you can read it from there. But this low stock will let you know, let's say for example here you have the minimum quantity, you have the quantity on hand. This low stock, it will appear once the quantity on hand is less than the minimum quantity that you also identify for each equipment or materials. Again, you have here print barcode. It's barcoded already. We will generate the barcode for you. Uh, you can print it out so that, of course, we're not going to be giving you the scanner. So, scan the pattern, each in and out of uh, uh, the